I will then replace my box with the variable x and show them an algebraic equation because not knowing their multiplication table coming to an algebra class will become a little bit problematic. Algebra, calculus, statistics, trigonometry is similar to learning a foreign language. This is Dr. Speranza, and if you're new to my channel, I upload math videos for my students in algebra, calculus, statistics, and now I'm going to create a new series for teachers who are interested in uh, learning a few techniques on how to teach algebra. I am an algebra teacher for over 18 years now, so for this video series, I've decided to share the techniques that I'm using inside my classroom and in my online classes whenever I teach algebra to my students. So in this lesson, I always tell my students working or answering algebra problems for the first time that it's extremely important that they have mastered their multiplication table because not knowing their multiplication table coming to an algebra class will become a little bit problematic. So I always give them the multiplication table and let them use the multiplication table even though they're already in my algebra class because I know and in my experience the more they use a certain um, tool like this, the more that they memorize it. So instead of asking my students to memorize the multiplication table, I will let them use this over and over and over again until they memorize it. And another math fundamental that I always practice them with before I move on to solving linear equation is the importance of knowing how to multiply and divide integers, especially how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers. This skill of how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers will help students to be less frustrated when they're working on linear equation or one step or two step equation in algebra. So those are the two um, math fundamentals that I always emphasize my students to master before they can move on or before I show them some problems involving algebraic equation. And the properties of numbers that I always introduce to my students before I give them the actual equations that we're going to be solving are the two properties of numbers that we use in solving for the values of x. And that is the additive inverse and the multiplicative inverse. So knowing these terms will help me in emphasizing that in my class, in all my algebra classes, I always tell them that learning algebra Calculus, statistics, trigonometry is similar to learning a foreign language. If you know how to speak it, you know how to write it, you'll become fluent with it. And similar to algebra, if you know the words and the language we're using, you'll be able to understand it better. So that's what I always tell my students, the analogy of mathematics and a foreign language, and that's when they understand it a little bit. And then I will emphasize the value of knowing the words like this in working out math problems like what we're going to be sharing in a little while. So let's say we have seven. So I always ask my student, what is the additive inverse of seven? Or the number that when you add to seven will equal to zero. And they will say that the number that you will add to seven to make it equal to zero will be negative seven. So in that way, I'll be able to open the discussion about the additive inverse of a number from 7, which is negative 7, that will turn to 0. And I will also give them a number that is negative, like negative 2, and ask them, what number can I add to negative 2 so that it will equal to 0? And that is how they will relate seeing their number line and visualizing their number line in their head and achieving the number zero or thinking of a number to add to that number for it to equal to zero. So this is how I introduce my additive inverse to be able to use this language when I start showing examples on algebraic equation. And the add or the multiplicative inverse, 
I will also review them on the value of the multiplicative inverse, which is asking them a number that when you multiply to a certain number will equal to one. And this one could be a little bit challenging to most students, but it's actually extremely simple if you give them one example. So you will say that the number that you will multiply to seven for it equal to one, and that is when you introduce the value of the reciprocals. Because if you multiply seven times one over seven, it will equal to one. So it's extremely important that they know the language that we're using so that we'll be able to teach our kids algebra a lot easier so that when we go to a more complex problem, they'll be able to understand it. So if I have negative two, I will ask my students, what number can you multiply to negative two for it to be equal to positive one? And some of them will be able to answer this. Some of them will still be thinking And that's when it will hit them that you just need to find the reciprocal of a certain number so that when you multiply it to a number, it will turn into one. So these are the two number properties that you need to introduce and make sure that they are understanding before we move on to algebraic equation. And before I show them the variable x, and a math problem that involves a letter and a number, I always show this example to emphasize that they are already doing algebra since first grade or second grade, but the way their teacher presented it to them is with this box method. And they will see the connection, and this is also a good way of showing the students that everything is connected and if they can connect something that they are already familiar with to a foreign equation that they're seeing for the first time it will be a lot easier to teach this student so i always start with this equation and of course i will ask them what is the number in the box so that box plus five is equal to seven and they will know that it's just two that they need for them to complete the equation so it's equal to 7. And if I have a box minus 3 equal to 8, what is the number in the box? And they will answer this particular problem really easily because they've seen this before. And after showing them this example, I will then replace my box with the variable x and show them an algebraic equation and I will tell them that in algebra we don't use the box anymore we use letters so that it can be more flexible and we can have more equations that would involve a letter and a number so now from a box I change it into the variable x so that they would see the connection between something that they already know into something that they're gonna be working on. And this is when I introduce the additive inverse because all we need to do whenever we're solving for x is to have x on its own. And to be able to do that, we need to get rid of positive five. So to get rid of positive five or plus five, what number can you add to positive five so that it will equal to zero? And the students will say, negative 5. So negative 5 is the number that we are going to be adding to 5 so that it will equal to 0 and I will also introduce to them the value of balance in mathematics that whatever you do on the left side you have to do it on the other side as well, as well to maintain the balance in your equation. So you can now introduce to them this technique and now the students can relate to why you're doing such process in algebra and by doing so you will see that 5 minus 5 is equal to 0 so you have x plus 0 equal to 7 minus 5 which is equal to 2 and you can also tell them that in algebra we always want to have a simple equation so instead of writing out x plus 0 is equal to 2 we don't need to write plus 0 because in algebra we already know that this will be the simplest form of our answer. So this is how I introduce my linear equation to my students. Always showing them the box method or the box problem and then use this equation for them 
to see the connection. And now that we have this particular equation, x minus 3 is equal to 8, we're going to solve for x minus 3 is equal to 8 by finding the additive inverse of negative 3, which is positive 3. And whatever you do on the left side, you have to do it on the other side as well. So that you can cancel out the numerical value with x so that x will be by itself. And 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. And now you have the value of x. And then after showing them two examples, I will ask them to work on problems or similar problems before I proceed to the multiplicative inverse. So I will give them similar problems like x plus 3 is equal to 8, or x minus 2 is equal to negative 3, or x plus 7 equals negative 3. So I will let them practice to problems similar to this one, and then I will introduce or I will tell them the value of repetition in mathematics and my analogy every time I ask my students to do a lot of problems is the sports analogy that in mathematics just like any skill just like getting better in gymnastics or getting better in basketball before you can do moves like moves of that of Simone Biles you need to make sure that you practice several times before you execute that move. Similar to mathematics, before you can reach that particular level, you need to have practice or you need to be able to practice several times for you to master it so that you'll be able to move to a different level and become better at it. So after showing them examples like this, I will challenge them to answer problems like or Or, or that variation. So before you move on to the next skill, make sure that you're able to show them all the possible combination of problems that they will encounter solving an equation similar to this one. And after they have mastered this skill, now you're more confident in showing them how to use the multiplicative inverse to find the value of x. So, just like what I showed you a while ago, I will always start with a problem that is more similar to them, which is this one. So, I will ask them to fill in the number in the box to complete the equation. So, what number can I multiply 5 with for it to be equal to 45? And they will say it's equal, I mean, it's 9. And in this example, what number do I need to multiply 2 with for it to be equal to negative 10? and they will say negative 5. So in this case, they will see the connection so that when I translate this into an equation without a box anymore, giving 5x is equal to 45 and 2x is equal to negative 10, I'll be able to introduce the value of the multiplicative inverse, which means I need to find a number that when I multiply to 5 will be equal to 1. And to do that, they will say, since they already know the value of the reciprocal, the number that you need to multiply 5 with for it to be equal to 1 is going to be 1 over 5. And when you multiply 1 over 5 on this side, you need to multiply 1 over 5 on this side as well. And then you simplify the equation. After showing them the reciprocal, you can now show them another, another technique to make it a lot cleaner or simpler. So instead of multiplying both sides by 1 over 5, you can say that whenever you have 5x is equal to 45, just divide both sides by 5, which is basically the same as finding the reciprocal, so that this will equal to 1x equal to 45 over 5, which is equal to... 9. And I always write my 1 right next to x so that my students will know that it's not equal to 0, that every time they see a variable x, there's always an invisible coefficient 1 by x. And then I will tell them that in mathematics, we don't usually write 1x. We use just x as a variable because it's already given that there's a coefficient of 1 right next to x. And when you have emphasized the multiplicative inverse in your step or your equation, now you can answer it 
using this method so that they will see the connection. So if I have 2x equal to negative 10, to have x by itself, all I need to do is to divide both sides by 2 to maintain the balance. And by doing so, I'll cancel out the 2, leaving me with 1x or simply x equal to negative 10 divided by 2, which is negative 5. And that's when you can tell them the connection between the multiplicative inverse from the box and how we use this process in some algebraic equation. So that is how I introduce my one-step and two-step equation. Whenever I ask them or whenever I teach basic math fundamentals with my students, I always need to make sure that they're seeing the connection of their previous uh, math lessons that is being used in a foreign um, writing or language that they are seeing right now. So after showing them a, um, a bunch of problems similar to this one, then I know I can confidently teach them how to solve problems like this. Or problems like this. So before you show them equation that can be a little bit intimidating to most students, always make sure that their fundamentals are already, or they already mastered their fundamentals so that when you show them problems like this, it will be a lot easier for you to teach your students and to avoid frustrations for you as a teacher and for them or for your students as learning individuals inside your classroom and that is our first lesson for today so watch out for my next video and again if you happen to like my video please like share and subscribe to my channel this is dr esperanza and thank you very much bye